Had to replace an uh, ABS sensor, or wheel speed sensor, on the Golf today. And I'll um, talk about figuring out uh, what's actually wrong when the dash lights up like a Christmas tree with these errors. Uh, on this car, it's been a bit intermittent. Uh, sometimes it made an error chime and a message. Uh, other times it just disappears. Um, when it did come up, we were getting uh, something relating to the stability control uh, or the ABS system. If you have in it the uh, MFI screen, you can look under vehicle status and the message, um, as you can see, is a bit different. Now, the, the dash lights, though, are a bit alarming because you get a steering error on the left and um, over on the right, you see the, uh, the ABS and the stability control um, are both unhappy too. Now, you really need a scan tool to get any further. Um, so here's VCDS plugged in. And here's a, uh, an auto scan I did before. Uh, you can see all these modules have errors. Uh, engine, auto trans, ABS, steering assist, uh, and so on. So it, it really looks like the car's just uh, in a world of hurt. Um, but what I want to say is uh, if you look down through all the modules, uh, you, what you'll find is that most of these are all just uh, referencing the root cause. Um, see how under engine the code just says uh, please check fault codes in control module for ABS brakes and uh, under auto trans it generates a unique code but again it's uh, talking about the signal from the ABS module um, and then the third one here uh, this actually is the ABS module and I can tell you that the other ones you know like the steering were also just directing here so the primary fault is this code for ABS wheel speed sensor rear left uh, electrical fault in circuit. Uh, this was um, marked as intermittent before and it's changed now. So I suppose the computer decided it was uh, more serious. Um, the freeze frame can give you an idea of uh, intermittent issues uh, from the recorded mileage. You can sort of see how far back it was compared to the current mileage. Um, and this was a bit frustrating to confirm what the problem was because it did seem to be mostly working rather than just, you know, 100% dead. Now I'll show you. Uh, if you go into modules in VCDS and then select uh, 03 uh, ABS and you click on measuring blocks here uh, and then you want to activate um, group 001, which is the default, obviously. Um, that will give you the speed readout uh, from all four wheel sensors. So drive the car and test it. Uh, I did this once and the rear left uh, was sticking at zero uh, while the others were reading okay. But when I did this video, uh, as you can see, they, uh, they all look okay. I couldn't actually repeat the uh, zero reading. And the only problem I could record is that the, uh, the whole thing would freeze up after a few seconds of measuring and uh, then it would generate this error. So the suspicion was uh, something uh, definitely wrong with the rear left sensor, but it could also still be an electrical problem with the module or the wiring to the sensor. Uh, so it would be nice to be able to check. Now here's the car jacked up and the wheel off. Uh, you can actually get to the sensor just fine with the wheel still on, but it's uh, easier for me to show you with it off. Now the sensor is on the back of the hub. It's uh, easy enough to find with the big cable which leads you right to it. You need to disconnect that first. Uh, just a simple release tab that you pull backward and um, the plug comes off with a tug. You'll want to first just visually inspect all this. Uh, maybe the connector could be uh, obviously damaged, you know, wet or uh, corroded. Also the cable, uh, check for signs of physical damage. And this all looks fine as you can see. Now, next is to get an idea if the uh, ABS module is supplying voltage, how it should. Now, a lot of old material you might read will tell you how uh, ABS sensors make their own voltage. There's no power to them, and uh, you can uh, check them by measuring their resistance. Um, that doesn't apply to these ones because uh, these are active systems which uh, actually do get 12 volts from the car. Um, and you can't easily test the sensor itself with a multimeter. Now what you can do is turn on the ignition and uh, just probe the cable to check that you're getting voltage there. Uh, apparently this 11.7 um, volts is normal. I don't know why it seems to be regulated down a, a little bit from battery float. 
So this isn't uh, a uh, you know 100% test. There still could be an upstream problem, uh, but it is suggestive of the sensor side. So it would be wise to uh, take it out and at least have a look at it. They're retained by a uh, five millimeter female hex screw. I would uh, just say be careful you get the bits in uh, properly and uh, keep it square when turning uh, as the screws, uh, they can get seized up and you'll uh, round out one of these hex heads fairly easily. Um, and then the sensor just pulls out. Uh, they also can get a bit stuck over the years. And there is ours. Now, as I said, you can't electrically t test these really, but uh, you can check for physical issues. The other area of suspicion here would be the mechanical side, you know, the ring on the hub that this thing watches. Uh, it could be damaged, it could be bent, rusted, whatever. Um, and if it was bent in the right way, for instance, uh, one thing it could do is, you know, just physically smash the sensor. So obviously, if you see any signs of contact at the tip here, uh, it wouldn't be any good to just replace the sensor with a good one. You'll just break it too, and uh, you'll have to get into the hub and then, uh, you know, find whatever the problem is. At this point, though, uh, it's enough. As you've seen, I was 90% uh, sure that it was a faulty sensor, and they're quite cheap. So, um, at, you know, really at this stage, it's easiest to just try one anyway. Um, here's my new one. This is a Hella sensor. Uh, any decent quality OEM will do. Uh, the Volkswagen Workshop Manual instructs the use of their uh, special anti-seize product. They have a part code for that, uh, but I think the idea is to just use a high temperature anti-seize. Uh, this is nickel based. Um, and I just applied it around these ribs that uh, wedge into the hole in the hub. The tightening torque on the screw is eight Newton meters if you care, uh, just to avoid over tightening. And the screw hole uh, I found was a little bit difficult to uh, line up uh, doing it from the outside. So yeah, like a mirror was helpful just to let me see it. There's the screw. And on the connector, I'm not very impressed with the weatherproofing for a uh, you know external connector. It would be nice to see a better gasket to waterproof this. So I'm just using some protector spray here. Um, I would say um, when washing your car, uh, careful where you spray high pressure water. I'd keep it well away from brakes and the, the wheel well area in general. So with the new sensor in, time to see if it's fixed the issue. Uh, first ignition turn here, the dash was still showing the steering light, although the others went out. Uh, so I went into VCDS and I uh, used the clear all codes function, um, for which you do have to do a full auto scan, it seems, again, which is uh, slightly annoying. And after that, I cycled the ignition again, and this time you see all the lights have all gone. And I can tell you after driving a bit that they haven't come back, so all seems okay. What I would do is uh, just do another auto scan after a while, just to uh, double check those codes. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Have fun.